Australia needs now? Warrantless spying. That means spying without a warrant. <laughs> Hello there, you four and a half million wonders. What glories shall we unearth together today? You know what's going on, don't you? Australia is looking into warrantless spying. That means you don't need to go through any judicial process in order to achieve the ability to surveil, survey, spy on your citizens. Now, before we get into that, I want you to know that between January and May next year, I'm all over the UK. Come see me live. We talk about this stuff in depth. You'll love it. Australians, I'll know whether you're coming or not because I'll be spying on you whether he likes it or not. Let's have a look at this story. Kit Clarenberg writes, the Australian Signals Directorate, Canberra's equivalent of Britain's GCHQ or the US's National Security Agency. Everyone's got their own version of that. I wonder if every little country will produce its own Edward Snowden. Is every single country got someone nervously doing their job going, oh, this ain't right, mate. We shouldn't be doing this. There's no warrant for it. They will be granted sweeping new powers to spy on Australians for the first time since its November 1947 founding. Sweeping new powers. The new powers are just brushing things like human rights to the side there. The move allows the agency to collect signals intelligence on individuals within the country without a warrant. Although allegedly only in situations where there is an imminent risk to life. Wait, there's an imminent risk to life. What is it? I don't know, you could fall over, you could slip over. What you realise when these new laws are brought about is there's a degree of subjectivity in the language. Once the law exists, they can incrementally turn the dial to create the necessary tyranny. Look at where we are in Australia now. We've already done stuff about the surveillance. We've already done stuff about the protest. What the bloody hell's going on? in that country. The last thing that's required are more laws that sweep. Domestic terror suspects are cited as a key target in the directorate's crosshairs, and it will also collect intelligence in conjunction with the Australian Defence Force for military operations with ministerial authorisation. While framed as sincerely concerned with keeping Australians safe, experts have expressed grave reservations about the development. Among them is John Blacksland, Professor of International Security and Intelligence Studies at the Australian National University, himself a military intelligence veteran who warned the powers were ripe for abuse. It's like there was a bit where they were sort of green and not ready for abuse yet, but then they turned rosy red with sheer abuse potential. My concern is the legislation we put forward is being drafted by insiders. It's drafted with their own concerns in mind. Like, when's it going to vote on some of this stuff? When's there going to be a vote? When's there going to be consensus? When are like all these sweeping laws keep getting passed all over the gaff, and everyone tells you, "Oi, this is what we have to do to protect democracy." And democracy, when you vote on what you want, yes, and we're protecting that by not letting you vote. You vote for something stupid. We've let you vote on things before, and you don't do what we tell you. The legislation was inspired by the findings of an extensive review by Dennis Richardson, the former chief of Australian Security Intelligence Organisation, the country's FBI. I like that they have to translate all of Australia's things into some kind of draconian American organisation. What the hell's the Australian Security Intelligence Organisation? FBI. Ooh. Conducted in close consultation with Australia's Assorted Intelligence Services. Published in December 2020, his appraisal's discussion of authorisations noted that these agencies can already conduct warrantless intelligence gatherings if they believe it to be necessary, proportionate, reasonable and justified. Again, all of these words, if you feel like doing something, you can say, well, this was, I'm only doing this because it's necessary, proportionate, reasonable and justified. Even the word warrantless, that means unnecessary, doesn't it? Like a warrant has got that name because it's necessary to necessitate. I've got a warrant for this. What I'm doing is warranted. This is warrantless. I'm just doing it because I feel like doing it. So it's just someone wandering in with like a walking stick knocking over your Rice Krispies packet and would like the ability to not only use various investigative techniques without official position, but also with protection from criminal liability when doing so. I don't like this new raft of measures that are introduced without any recourse for criminal liability. Because if like when they're drafting up the legislation, they're going, look, I don't know why I'm even saying this, but could you make it so that this is impossible for there to be any comebacks if we did anything criminal? Why? Are you planning to do anything criminal? No, it's just like, you know, oh, also, like, make sure that there's no balloons in here and make sure no, like, little mice playing violins come in. 
Oh yeah, because well, that's not going to happen either. That's right. I'm just listing a whole lot of things that ain't going to happen. Leaked documents exposed by journalist Annika Smeverst in April 2018 showed that high-level plans for untrammeled domestic spying. They don't even want it to be trammeled. Can we just trammel it? No, get rid of them trammels. Untrammeled domestic spying by the Australian Signals Directorate date back even further. They revealed how the respective heads of Australia's Defence and Home Affairs Ministry... What's that? Well, it's sort of like the Home Affairs and Domestic Ministries. ...had discussed allowing the agency to access citizens' emails, bank records, text messages without approval or trace. That's like us. That's actual us, isn't it? Like you're a person with a phone. I don't like the idea of people looking at my bank, looking at my text messages. Why? What have you got to hide? Just fuck off. That's what I've got to hide. Leave me alone. Let me live my life. I don't like the idea that we're granting what I would regard as a kind of spiritual, ethical and moral authority in previous incarnations of our culture that you would have given to a sort of a divine resource, a god of some kind, even if that ultimately became corrupted and institutionalised. I thought that's what we'd move beyond. Ah, oh, the church, it was stupid. It was just the way of people having power. Let's have the state do that now. You can't have the state reading your text messages and deciding whether or not you're right or wrong. Leave people to fuck alone. That's what most people want. Isn't that what you want? Then forget the abstract projections of what you think society should be like. Now, just return to, right, I'm me. Here I am, look. What do I want? Do I want someone looking at my phone? No. Do you want to be left alone? Yeah, leave me alone. Let me get on with my life. That's what we all basically want. It's only a small percentage of people that are out and out crackpot nutters that you think, oh shit, there should be measures to control those people. And they're always used to leverage measures that will, of course, necessarily, ultimately, and I think intentionally, affect the lives of ordinary people. It's not this cabal of imaginary nutters that are the problem. It's you that's the problem. They're not trying to protect you from them. They're trying to control you using them. A government source told Smithhurst... Smithhurst, what are you doing? Sorry, sir. There's uh, one of your numbskulls in Sector 7G has been sending a text message. Smithhurst, how want you to spy on them? A government source told Smithhurst they were horrified by the proposals given. There is no actual national security gap this is aiming to fill. All right. <laughs> there's, not even, there's not even a problem. Well, I suppose we have to do this, don't we? You know, because the old national security gap. They're in a gap. It's right there. Up against your head. There's no gap. Australian Federal Police raided both the alleged leaker of the files and Smethurst the next year. You know who the bloody problem is? It's bloody Smethurst. That's who it is. Uh, have you got a warrant? No, we don't bloody well need a warrant. What's you got out of there? Get that walking stick away from me. What's in that? Misuse of these capabilities is almost inevitable. Oh, great. In 1973, the US Supreme Court ruled warrants were mandatory for domestic intelligence gathering. Two years later, a Senate investigation found that the NSA and other US intelligence agencies had nonetheless been engaged in unauthorised spying on American citizens, including anti-war protesters, for your own good, civil rights activists, for your own good, political dissidents, for your own good, Monitoring all their private communications from telephone conversations to telegrams. How far back does this go? Oh my God, stop. Being spied on, stop. Using telegram now, stop. This led to the 1978 Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, which made it a dedicated criminal offence to eavesdrop on American citizens without judicial oversight. It was revealed in 2005 that the NSA had continued illegally intercepting the phone calls and digital communications of US citizens with the witting help of major telecoms giants which passed copies of all emails, web browsing and other internet traffic to and from its customers at home and abroad to the agency and its British counterpart GCHQ. Like, they keep getting caught doing this, like, snooping and spying. Right, we're going to pass the law to stop that. Yeah, sorry, we won't do it again. Right. Just carry on doing it. Oi, you've been doing it again. Right, pass another law. Yeah, no, sorry. Yeah, pass a better law. We'll stop this time. Right, don't do no more snooping. Eve drone spying. Right, yeah, no, that all seems to be in order. Right, spy on the bastard that wrote that law. Oi, stop it. No, you're, you're going to need another law. Sorry, we broke it again. Sorry. Key components of the international spy network known as Five Eyes are situated in Australia at the Pine Gap and Kojarana satellite surveillance bases. According to investigative legend, legend, Duncan Campbell, around 80% of the messages intercepted by the latter, which employs US and British staff in key posts, are sent automatically to GCHQ and the NSA. The thing about that Five Eyes is, is it like shows that whatever your national identity might be built upon, there is a network that supersedes your understanding of national interest. If Australia can five eyes its way around snooping in your private little drawers and matters, they're exchanging it with the US 
and the UK. Anyways, you might be, well, we're okay in the UK. We'd never do that. We're okay here in the United States. Yeah, you lot, if you see what everyone's doing over there, what, you bastards, right? You know, like this, exchanging this information. As I've always said, national interests are a kind of placebo for our own tribal impulses. Meanwhile, the truly powerful operate globally because that's the reality the reality is it's a globe you can pretend you're in a country i'm in a country we've got a flag but really people are just going yeah watch them fuckers yeah watch them they're all up to their five eyes skull dug it while every five eyes member can theoretically veto requests for such material when you're a junior ally like canberra you never refuse campbell records Canberra, we need those records. But don't that seem like a little bit out of order? You'll give us those fucking records now. Yes, hand them over, Canberra. No one even knows where you are in Australia. One can't help but wonder if the Directorate's new domestic purview is an experiment gauging levels of backlash and controversy among the Australian public before similar measures, provably or potentially already in operation, are openly codified across all Five Eyes member states. Oh, that's what's going on in Australia. They're gaming it. They're gaming what to do everywhere, right? Let's just say Australia, it don't really matter. I mean, it's a bit like America, a bit like England, but it's over there. It's not in Europe. It's a recent country. Let's see what they do. Oh, they're basically tolerating it. Right, here we come. Ongoing legal battles against mass data collection in various jurisdictions clearly necessitate the practice being legalised and legitimised. If Canberra's American and or British friends politely requested they run such a pilot scheme, would or even could they decline? Reinforcing this interpretation mere days after the Directorate's remit was expanded, the Australian government pledged to introduce new laws forcing social media giants to unmask anonymous users who post offensive comments, with hefty fines doled out to those companies which are unwilling or unable to do so. When it comes to internet anonymity, it's anonymity for me. But no anonymity for thee. We are being spied on, information is being traded and switched, text messages are being looked at, while obscure, obfuscated agencies around the world slip around under the cover of darkness trading in our data. Either anonymity is good or it's bad, rather than some divided issue where anonymity is granted according to the interests of the powerful. The reasons for Canberra's haste are unclear, although it's surely no coincidence that London and Washington have battled for many years to end online anonymity for good. It's only due to intense domestic opposition that these efforts have so far failed. Wow, look at all that mad skullduggery. Look at the reality of the deep state. Organisations like Five Eyes are cooperating at a level of jurisdiction that we can't comprehend. It's completely veiled to us. This story shows you that what's happening in Australia is profound and significant, of course, for Australia. Our brothers and sisters in Australia are suffering as a result of these measures. But beyond that, it seems like Australia is being used as a pilot scheme, a testing ground for measures that will become global because in reality, it's already global. The tech is probably set. The systems are in place. They're just seeing what will the public pushback be. Well, that's down to you. You're the public. Only you can decide how much public pushback there is. How much is there going to be? How much pushback are you going to provide? But this is just stuff what I reckon, and I'm just a fella in a cardigan.